Hello. Today I'm interested in why we want to cite things, why we want to try to use connections to other pieces of literature to tell us where to go to inform our projects and to uh, use in everyday life. A good way to illustrate this, or I think a good way to illustrate this, is a little bit of an argument I had on Twitter with some guy who um, took issue with something that I had said about um, the concept that um, some of the traditions from Christmas, not all of them, but some of the traditions from Christmas being originally Norse beliefs that um, they disagree with and they wanted me to cite an actual source for it and sent me this website which they'd written themselves. So here's the website in question. We can see that it's a blog and I will switch windows for me. I don't think you see anything. And I am start to scroll down. So it's a blog written by the same person who wrote it to me, which is a little bit dubious already because it's not an extra citation. They're not citating, citing, citating. They're not citing anybody either. And if we look through, we see they've got a picture of themselves. That's fine. And they've got a whole lot of issues. Um, and they do have the odd link here. But if we look at these, these are mostly also blogs and articles online, and so also not really referring to anything. There are the odd one. Let us go down to the bit that is of interest. That link goes to this other blog, which is by a different person, and that's fine. But uh, obviously the, um, it, the information that we're actually searching for is, is this tradition related to Christianity? Does it stem from early Christianity? Or does it stem from early Norse belief? Or does it stem from something else? And the answer is they are making a claim. They're making several claims. Many of them are plausible. One of the plausible claims is that there is a time gap between Norse and Christianity. And so it's unlikely that there was a transfer. And the other ones are related to um, the confusions or uh, misbadging of other things uh, related to Christmas, things like Christmas trees and things like that. So I've jumped further down to the close to the bottom. Sorry about this. So, and what we can find is this link here. Whoops, hang on. This link here. It's weird because my mouse on the screen, there's not this mouse on there. But this link here, which is actually a connection to something else. So let's have a look at that to see what kind of links are in this article. But in just the same way, this other blog contains an awful lot of text, the odd link. And here is a good one because it's a translation to an original article. So that is something that we would see possibly as being more of more value than people citing each other's blogs. And then we go down and find uh, the odd woodcut, but not very much in the way of citations, which makes it quite difficult to work out what's going on and um, quite difficult to work out what the basis is, how much, how believable this um, claim is. This is an example. You can see it says, don't take the Odin out of Yule. And it contains a, an explanation of how Santa Claus and his reindeer sleigh evolved from Norse myth, which is the thing that I was claiming or at least referring to. But it turns out that it is just as bad as the others. If we look through here, there are claims. There are people saying what happened in the past, but there are no references to where it comes from, which gives us two contradictory stories, two contradictory um, hypotheses, which neither of which have any references at all to anywhere that we can really look up. So this has got a long story that also seems to be plausible about how um, the some pre previous beliefs that are connected to Norse beliefs were transmuted into the current Christ Christmas celebrations, some of them, not all of them, um, bearing in mind that a lot of extra things will have happened and a lot of confusion will have been involved. But still, here is very little there are very little connections to um, the original text, so we don't know anything about it. 
If we look at another example, this is a real um, tourism type guide and it's also going to talk about midwinter solstice which is another thing that's connected but also um, not entirely clear or it's also not um, there isn't a consensus on whether this is even true obviously the um, fjord tours a tourism board will have a strong uh, tendency to sell anything that is attractive and of course people would go and have a look and maybe go and turn up at Christmas and celebrate with them spend lots of money so there isn't any reason or well, there's no more reason to believe this than any of the others and if we look through there are also very little connections to old text to tell us what is really true so we go from one blog in effect to another blog and neither of them have that many citations to original information. That doesn't mean that there are any in any other types of blog in the other direction. So let's have a couple look over. Uh, uh, so let's have a look at a couple of those to see uh, what they look like. Trying to find more accurate sources that cite better, we can find a few books. This is a book here, an old book. I think it's still available international kindle okay it is still available i ha can't get access to the full text but we can see that um, she makes claims that i would have thought were true from what i learned in history but there are there's no way to tell whether they make any connection to the original information and so we can't find out how we can't test how true it is and bearing in mind this is a paperback book and so it is somewhat more believable than a blog which has no editorial control whatsoever so you can write in a blog whatever you like and it doesn't have to be true as long as you don't libel anybody really very little can happen here we've got a book where there's an editor there are people that are check and maybe if somebody writes in and says this is a mistake in it it will get changed eventually but it's still a book an opinion book and so it's not really a, a, an original source and unless it cites an original source it's only slightly better than a blog if we look at a better example this isn't going to tell us what we want but this is a better example this is a book that tells us about the development of some of the icelandic um I can't remember, Descent of the Gods, so that's what it is. And what we can see here at the bottom is that they refer in numbers to original text, the first verse of something. I'm not going to try to say it because I don't recognize half of the letters anyway. And I know I said it's quite difficult for me. Um, but you can see that they're referring to translations of really, really old works. And then you can get a little bit more information. It's a little bit better, but obviously we still don't know whether the old works are better than the new ones, but at least we know that those were in existence in existence at the time. And finally, we come to this, a book, or two books actually, written by a woman called Hilda Ellis Davidson. She is a legitimate, um, I think she's dead now, but she was a legitimate historian of this type of material of um, pre-Christian belief in Northern Europe and um, this is one of her books called The Lost Beliefs of Northern Europe she wrote a great number of books or no she didn't she wrote a number of books this is a preview obviously on Google so I don't have access to all of it but we can see first of all the style that in this case in this particular book um, there's a little bit of uh, explanation and then it goes on to more to the archaeology so here's a picture of what the actual archaeological dig looked like um, and the references are much more um, this is what we found and we don't know any more than this so this is a taking it one burial at a time this particular book and um, it doesn't contain any specifics of what the connections are um, and initially from this book we don't know anything about that but we can look at her another one of her books this one gods and myths of, the, of northern europe it's a penguin book but still it's a good book and uh, why is it a good book because the second chapter 
is about how we know the sources of our knowledge. So that is important because that is the citation. Um, obviously it says her background and you can see that she has a very academic background with a um, number of similar types of material and so she was a legitimate Viking era historian. If we get to that chapter, which is a little bit difficult on this mode, here we go, sources of knowledge. So there's a lot of text in here and no direct links. We can see that she is more open about what we don't know, whereas the other sources may, and I don't want to be nasty to anybody, but that's just the style. The other sources say their opinion about what's going on without really saying how much is not known. This is a historian saying, this is what we don't know. So they're saying, what do we know about um, pre-Christian beliefs in Northern Europe? And the answer is not a lot, um, because there were a number of years, quite a lot of years between when those closed and when we have our first pieces of information, particularly in some countries. Uh, Scandinavian countries have a little bit more continuity, but uh, England, for example, does not. So in this case, they're giving she, she is giving an example of um, Beowulf, which is a saga in the UK, a pre-Christian saga. But uh, if we get to it, we can see that Beowulf was written down by a Christian monk in about AD 1000. So probably, um, probably 700 years after it stopped. Um, the um, advent of Christianity in the UK is started around 400. So what we see is that there's a gap and there could be some changes and we don't know what those are. And this is honest about those and it leaves the gap, which we don't know. So I'm going to leave it there because I don't really want to solve this issue because it might be something that concerns some of you. And that's not what I want to do. I don't want to change your beliefs. Um, what I want to show is that sometimes uh, saying where you got the information from is very important because it backs up how true it is. And in other cases, if you don't just write the story, that's nice. But as soon as we're trying to use it to gain anything afterwards, then the citations are very important. And the style is not so important, the style of the citations, that they are there and that they go back to the original material and not to just other similar types of secondary sources is important, which you will find when you write the project sometime, that uh, it's very tempting to, to cite a review article or a book, and the book cites somebody else, and the citation of somebody else cites somebody else, and so you never really find out who originally came up with the idea. That is a bad way to go about it. Just to finish on a couple of examples of what I think would have been better, where we set, when we see what they're thinking about, let me switch to the correct window. We can see uh, one, it's a slightly different subject, but I found it by accident while looking for these. So it's also about history and it's also about pre-Christian um, beliefs. And if we look through, we can see, first of all, it starts off much the same and fairly, fairly uh, no, not very much different from the others but where we see the links to what they're mentioning. So we've got a, an original Icelandic um, song, I think it is, or it's, and then we've got an, um, so, so part of the original text of older um, verse and sagas and things like that that have been translated, and they show you even which translation that they've used. So um, we can look through this and we can see several of those and we can also see connections to what Christian writers said and exactly which one that they've used here correctly cited in the text. If we look at this other one, it takes a little bit of time to load, we can see also that it's possible to do with a blog as well. This is also a blog of some kind. It's an online um, little report, a little bit of text about... Um, exactly the same subject, but it's slightly different. It's about um, Yule and winter sacrifices that the, that the Norse would have had. 
and it's um, another thing that we don't know fully from those times. But if we look through, we can see, let me try and find one, we can see, first of all, the names of the people, which was also present in the other blogs that I was criticizing before. But what I prefer here is that we see the publications, which one it is, and more importantly, here, the poems, the original information from the people that were there at the time, references referenced as this is what this original poem said. Um, so this particular one there, and there's another one down here somewhere. So that's how I feel it would be better, but obviously it's not very important for us in our other topics because we don't need to work, work out something about ancient history of Christianity in Northern Europe. But what we do need to know is how to cite so that we can persuade people that what we say is correct. And so that they can do what I would like to do here and go back and look. Obviously I don't speak uh, Nordic languages, so I wouldn't be able to read them. But we can find the translations and they even tell us on the one before, but I think somewhat in here too, about which translations that they have used and which ones are better. Better obviously for their purposes.